Hey everybody, I'm Daniel. I'm the technical director here at RW Spline Design. And today we're gonna to wrap up our series on alternative stains, talk a little bit about the products that we used, and then also what we learned through this series in our vendor interviews. I think there are a lot of factors for why companies are looking at the next iteration of stains. I mean, these are one of those flooring products that's been around a while and it doesn't seem like there's been a lot of innovation in them. So they're kind of the next product up for, for reinventing, if you will. And some of the reasons I observe, one, VOC laws. I mean, that's a big one that is pressuring vendors and stain companies. When I moved to Denver, you know, I went from Texas, which was a state where you could buy anything in a gallon or a five gallon bucket, to Colorado that very quickly, after I moved there, had implemented a law to limit the amount of VOCs in a container. So now it means all your stain cans have to be purchased in quarts in the state of Colorado. If you're doing floors on any of the coasts, that's probably not a surprise to you or in you know certain states that have already implemented those laws. If you're, like I said, doing floors in the Midwest or um, other regions, then you probably have not experienced that yet. You have oil solvents that are getting on your hands that you're breathing in. Uh, even if you're wearing a respirator, that oil solvent is getting all over your clothes. In addition to that, I think just user friendliness, you know, stain companies or, or rather coating companies are looking at improving the formulation of uh, something like stains so that it is more user friendly, it's uh, harder to mess up, easier to fix. Vendors want to have a complete system, you know, bottom to top on the floor. If you're a finished company that doesn't make uh, stain, you're relying on another vendor's product being put down successfully onto the raw wood, and you're relying on that process to be done successfully and also for the product to work right for your product to be successful over the top of that. So it just seems to make sense that vendors would want to um, have all of their own products that they've tested, they know are compatible. People are moving away from traditional oil solvent stains for a variety of reasons. Um, I mean, application issues that relate to dry time seems like a big one. So you can do 50 floors and 49 of them may turn out great, but because oil solvent stains take longer for that oil solvent to dry and evaporate, you can run into issues where that you know, 50th house is a little bit more humid or the boards have you know, wide gaps in them that you get a lot of stain down in and it just doesn't dry in time and you run into either adhesion issues or bleed back or you know, a variety of things related to dry time. Another one would just be how offending is the product to work with. Um, one of my least favorite things is going home at the end of a stain day and then smelling that stain all night waking up the next morning and smelling it in my nose, uh, trying to get it off my hands. Um, it's just not a pleasant experience, you know, wondering whether or not it's getting through my skin. Even if I wear a mask or a respirator, it still gets through. I mean, anybody who's stained a floor knows it it's, can be pretty harsh on the senses. How do these stains work? To best answer that question, it'd probably be good to explain how a traditional oil solvent stain works. So you have the solvent, which is the liquid that carries the pigment of the stain. And with an oil solvent stain, that solvent is uh, some sort of oil product that will evaporate off into the air. So it's an oil chemical of some kind that evaporates into the air. And with these other products, you get a little bit different um, either solvent or way that they work on the floor. With Bonacroma and Basic Hypertone, instead of an oil solvent, it's water. So the thing that evaporates off into the air is um, ideally just water vapor. With Palmin to Color It, that's a penetrating oil. And so much like a hard wax oil or a tongue oil, that's gonna penetrate into the wood and harden up instead of evaporate off. And then with Loba Stain, the solvent is alcohol. So that alcohol evaporates off and then dissipates faster than an oil solvent would dissipate. The dry time varies a little bit from product to product. Uh, 
With the Palman 2 color it system, they guarantee a five hour dry time. So five hours and you can coat the floor, guaranteed, because it's a product that hardens up. I think the only caveat there is it's 12 hours for their white color. The thing to keep in mind is five hours is a good amount of time, but that is your stain and seal coat in one. So um, you're skipping the step of having to seal the floor. In my experience in Denver, um, that went down and we were able to get back on it pretty quickly and coated it within that five hour time frame. Bonacroma, their by the book time is uh, two to three hours. And um, it's probably, again, depending on conditions, it's probably gonna be a little quicker than that. Uh, my experience in Denver was it was dry very quick. I'd say we were back on that and it felt dry to the touch and red dry in one to two hours. The basic Hypertone, they say two to four hour dry time, but if you add in their stain glide, then that's gonna extend the dry time um, to probably overnight. When we coated the panel in Denver, I did wait till the next day in order to put a coat on it. And uh, that was just because I had to add in the stain glide because of how dry the conditions were while I was applying the product. Loba's stain uh, dries really quick. The alcohol is very fast to dry and dissipate. I'd say an hour um, to under an hour for that product to dry. I'm not a great color expert, so I'm probably not the person who should be answering this question. However, I can say from working with those products and putting them down, and from my perspective, they did look good to me. They did look like a good substitute for the stains that are, the oil solvent stains that are out now. I didn't notice a significant difference and I think sampled to a homeowner, they would look just about or every bit as good as the current oil solvent stains. The only thing that worried me from a color perspective going through those tests was the Loba stain. Once it dried, just as the raw um, stain, it looked very chalky and um, the color looked very washed out. So we decided to put a coat over the top of that to see what it would look like coated. And once we had put a coat of sealer over the top of it, the color came back and the depth came back. So um, certainly the Loba stain looked concerning, but the final product did not. With Bonacroma, I really right off the bat just love the fact that it doesn't smell bad. Um, you can work with it doesn't smell bad. It kind of actually smells like Play-Doh to me, um, but it was pleasant to work with from that perspective. I also love the fact that I'm not going to burn the building down with it. Uh, I'm the kind of person that would forget something and, you know, accidentally leave some rags on a job or something. So I do like that I can just take everything, throw it in a trash bag, throw that trash bag in my truck or my van and not worry about it. With Palmans to color it, I really like the way that it applies with the buffer. So um, I like buffing on and then I like buffing off uh, in that method. I've applied a good amount of hard wax oil finishes. And so it was very familiar to do that and it felt you know, pretty idiot proof putting it down. I think the biggest advantage that I saw with Palman's to color it is the fact that it stains and it seals all in one step. So you know, it does have a five hour dry time or or time between application and coating. However, you're eliminating an entire step of having to seal a floor. So staining a floor doesn't really add that much to the process because you'd have to seal it anyway if it was a natural floor. Um, I really like that. Uh, the Loba stain, I was pleasantly surprised with just how easy it was to apply. I've never applied something that you buff on and off using the same pad um, as you go along. So that method was uh, just really neat, you know, and it helps keep you from using a lot of pads as you buff. So as I went across the panel, um, I never had to change the pad. I was able to buff all the stain on the panel. And the other thing that I really liked about Loba stain is just how easy it was to repair. I mean, it's, cause it was a little bit of a different um, application. I did leave some errors in the floor where I started and thought, well, uh, you know, with a normal stain, those would be pretty hard to repair. But with the Loba stain, it was just putting more stain down and buffing on and off, uh, just like the initial 
uh, coating. So with Basics Hypertone, the thing I like about that, I like the color a lot and uh, I just like the richness of that color. And then also with it being a water-based stain, I liked how easy it was to fix just taking the areas that I did have lap lines or a little bit of extra color and touching them with a maroon pad uh, was all I needed to do in order to start coating. How would somebody mess these stains up? So I think there are a variety of ways you might do that just depending on the product. Um, Bonachroma, I mean, right off the bat, I'd say that final buffing step, just not getting all the product off. So as I was going across it, with the pad, you know, if I wasn't paying attention and I move too far I, uh, or too fast off of uh, the area I was buffing up, you know, I could leave swirl marks and I did see some swirl marks that I had to go back and pick up. I also think um, if your pad got loaded and you didn't notice that, you know, you're obviously not picking up products, so you're swirling that around the floor. So I think just paying attention to that final evening out and um, removal step. Also, if you painted it on the floor and you left it too long, it's probably gonna set up and get gummy. So there were a couple of spots I was buffing where the buffer started to bog down a little bit. Um, and I just hadn't gotten to the product fast enough. I think you can re-emulsify the product, but again, that's that's something I'd watch out for. Palman's two color it. I think the main thing there is just the edges, just doing a consistent wipe off of the edges, not scrubbing it too hard with the terry cloth like I did, or you might end up with the light border. Um, but if you just evenly wipe the edges real quick, uh, it should look fine. However, if, if for some reason you wanna get really aggressive on the perimeter of the floor, you might be able to remove too much with the rag or Let's say you're buffing and you see something and you reach down and scrub it with a rag. I could see leaving a light spot there. So that's what I would try to avoid with Palmans. The Loba stain, I mean, you could leave heavy and light spots with that. I certainly left light spots where I started, just trying to pick up kind of the method of how to put it down. But honestly, it's so easy to repair that you just squirt more stain down and buff over that and it goes away uh, really fast. The basic hypertone, I think the biggest thing with that would be not moving fast enough, not having enough help. So if you're just one person trying to work with the product by yourself, and especially if it's dry, if it's hot, you know, if the conditions are such that it's going to dry fast, then you could get yourself into a situation where you're lap lining the product. So I'd certainly have help, be able to move quick and do everything you can to, you know, maintain a little bit more ideal coating conditions where maybe it's a little more humid or something in the house or the floor is not hot. You're not working in a area where there's a lot of sunlight that's just baking the floor, things like that. I think if you find yourself in a variety of situations, you would consider using one of these alternative stain products. So right off the bat, I would think anybody who doesn't like the offensiveness of an oil solvent just getting in your nose or getting on your skin, you're concerned about the long-term health issues uh, that might arise from the product getting on you. And then again, you're just tired of smelling it all the time uh, in your nose. So that would be a big reason to consider one of these products. I think another reason would just be if you're running a company where you're constantly training people how to put uh, stains down, or maybe you're a contractor who's newer to staining or newer to floors. I think some of these would be great alternative products that are gonna be a little bit more forgiving and just a little bit easier to work with. I would certainly recommend for any solo contractors who are putting stain down by themselves, you know, I find myself in that situation a lot, I would recommend using Bona, Loba, or Palman. Those three products go down really well and they're pretty forgiving and give you a little bit more time to work with them as you're putting them down. So would I consider changing my staining process based on what I learned from these alternative stains? This is where the rubber hits the road because everybody can talk products up until they have to use a different product on a floor and then the game changes. So. I can honestly say yes, I would consider using these and I can back that up by saying I have used these on floors and on jobs. Um, certainly working with them on the panel helped me gain a lot of confidence with them. Um, as I said throughout all the videos, uh, the demonstration videos, any of these products you can get and you can learn 
on a panel. And I would even recommend doing that as opposed to just learning live in somebody's house. You know, as I worked with these products, I just saw there were a lot of advantages to them. So specifically for me is um, just the VOCs and how pleasant they are to work with and how easily repairable and user friendly they are. So as I worked on the floor, I mean, I hate when oil solvent gets into my nose. I hate smelling it for a day afterwards. Being able to use a product that doesn't do that is a huge advantage for me. I also think just because a lot of times I am staining a floor solo, the user friendliness, the, the ease of repair is very important for me. Being able to go back and just quickly fix anything before I start coating the floor uh, is a big advantage. So I would certainly be looking in the future on any sort of stain jobs I have to figure out how I can substitute one of these products um, into the mix. Thanks for watching this video, wrapping up our series on alternative stains. If you haven't seen our other videos in the series, I encourage you to go check those out. We've got great demonstrations as well as interviews with the vendors. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. Like and subscribe. 